Hey guys, I want to share with you how I use custom environment devices in my Logic Pro X projects to control things such as my reference track or click track. And my purpose is to give you some ideas for how you could create your own environment devices to speed up your own workflow or use them for other creative reasons. So here's an example of a custom logic environment device I use almost every day at my work. It controls volume and solo of my reference track and of my custom click track. And it can also switch where my reference track is coming from. So you may ask, why is this helpful? Why don't you just go to the actual faders and adjust them? Well, among other reasons, every time I have my main screen set selected, which is the one I do about 90% of my work in, I have access to these controls right in front of me all the time. So I'm usually using bigger sessions with lots of tracks. So with this, I don't have to go hunting around for my click track or my reference track to adjust their volume, solo, mute, etc. One of the things I've been doing as well with this is that I have a replication of these same faders and buttons on my iPhone using the Touch OSC app so I can control these remotely. So a reference track can be used in different ways and for different reasons. Sometimes I need to compose music to an already existing track, or I need to make a sound-alike track of an existing track, or I need to add original musical elements to an incomplete track, or sometimes I'm composing from scratch and I want a reference track to work from and kind of reference any aspect of its sonic signature, such as volume, frequency, panning, spatial processing, etc. And so especially if I'm creating a sound-alike track or creating loops or synths to a basic rhythm section recording, I'm many times needing to turn this reference track on and off, solo it, adjust the volume, etc. So I already showed you how I can adjust the volume or solo my reference track, but I also have these buttons here that can change it to Unity Gain all the way off, which essentially mutes it, or these buttons, which changes it to a specific volume, which in this case is low or medium volume. And this can be helpful when I want to have a standardized volume to hear the tracks that I'm creating over top of my reference track. And Unity Gain is good for many times for volume matching a master to something I'm working on. Now this button switches all these controls for this reference track to this track here. And this second audio track's input is turned on. And I have audio from another computer, most likely playing iTunes, sent over on a digital optical cable to this computer's audio interface. And I have all the same options on this second track as I did with my original reference track. And this is nice because I can access my whole iTunes library of reference tracks, or anything, and I don't have to bring those WAV files into this project. So here are some faders for a customized click track that I have set up. I have a fader for downbeat, I have a fader for upbeat, and I have a fader for count off. One, two, three, and this fader controls the aux one, channel, which is two, the bus for my click three, track. Four, one, and two, I also have a solo three, four, for the aux as well, one, for two, these when it comes time three, to bounce that four, click for live one, performance purposes. So back to this environment device that I was kind of showing you in the beginning of the video. It also has volume control for my reference track. It's got solo. And it also has three different faders here that control high pass and low pass of a channel EQ that's on my reference track. So here is a high pass filter and you can see when I move this up the high pass is engaged on the EQ. Here's a low pass. And here's a band pass. So a good reason you'd want 
to use high pass, low pass, band pass on your reference track. Let's just say you just want to hear the high frequency information. You want to know what's going on in the top end, or you want to hear just the low end frequency information. And this is something that I use a lot. If I want to hear what's going on in the subs and, and where the cutoff frequencies are for the different instruments. And and bandpass can be nice. Let's say you let's say you're composing something and you have a reference track that you're working from and you and you, you have like loops going on, you have some low synths and you have some high frequencies, and you just want to hear like the melody or the chord progression from your reference track. So you, you crank the bandpass up a bit and it's gonna cut off the high and low frequencies and it'll just allow the mids to go through so that you can hear just the stuff you need to hear, like the melody or the harmony. All right, well in the next video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to create this environment device with the volume, the solo, high pass, low pass, band pass. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in an environment layer with the objects and the cabling and whatnot. So thanks for watching and yeah, I'll see you in the next video.